Hi folks, welcome to the Wednesday Widget brought to you by NYC CNC. A lot of folks on YouTube that I like, like ABOM79 and Oxtool, uh, Tom Lipton over there in California, have started these weekly series where they post on a regular basis. And I don't know whether they did this because of YouTube, uh, but I do know that YouTube really pushes you to post regular content. Um, I'm, I'm fortunate enough, I'm just shy of 25,000 subscribers, so you get these uh, meetings with the YouTube people to help steer you to what they want to see. And they were, they're pushing for weekly stuff, so we're going to start the Wednesday widget. And my thoughts on the Wednesday widget is it may be CNC related, it may be manual machining related, it may be a customer part, it may be something I'm doing in-house, it may be Arduino related or motor and sensor related. We'll kind of see where it goes. But today, I've got this part here, and this is a bar that goes on a Camdex reloading machine, and it pushes, the, pushes this shuttle bar over to dispense powder into a case. The customer is retrofitting the machine from another caliber, and they want to change the height at which the powder drops, and that's done by adjusting where this part angles out. They tried to make a quick one themselves, and credit to them, I think it actually served its purpose for a time, but as you can see, they broke a tap off in this one particular part, so they wanted one made sort of the right way. It's actually quite helpful, though, because they, they've sort of given us the final measurements. So this is going to be a quick, snappy video. We're going to measure this part. We're going to draw it up in SolidWorks. We are going to cut actually four of them on the TorchMate plasma cutter. And then we're going to tap each one of them with slightly different vertical hole heights so that we can let the customer sort of choose which one they like in terms of where it's dropping that powder. Let's dive right in. Let's write down some measurements on this part. We'll trace it out to do so. So, a couple things. We know that this line here continues on to that line there. This is, that'll make it easy. And we know, let's see here, the front edge, yeah, we're gonna call that four inches. And then we're going to call this top section, I think it was, we looked a minute ago, and we're going to say it's two inches. And then we're going to use the overall length, which I already measured. Uh, my uh, calipers here don't reach out that far, but the overall length is 695. And we know the angle due to the continuation of this line, so we shouldn't actually need this measurement here. But we're going to call it about 1.25. Our hole is um, centered on the Y, and we're going to call that 2.25 in. So let's see here. Do I have enough information? Uh, it's oh, sorry. I already know it's three quarter inch wide, and yeah, I think that's it. Let's hop into SolidWorks. Okay, we'll start a sketch on the top plane, and first we'll draw a lower rectangle, which we knew three quarter and four inches long. We'll then draw a second rectangle on the right edge, which I don't want it to touch. There we go. Same thing. And we said this one was two inches long. And then we knew the part overall length is 695. Okay, now I will just use the line tool, connect these two lines, and we will trim off these two, and let's make sure if I did that correctly, which I don't think I did. So that's the mistake, oops. So what I want to do <clears throat> is offset this line by 0.75 the other way, and I will then draw this out, and then this side you can use the extend entity, and then I'll trim this, oops. Trim that and that and that. And I actually like to clean it up here. Make that one line segment. 
Okay. So now, we take a look. How far did we say that should be? Yeah, so one, we said 125 is 121. That's close enough for this particular part. We will, when we're done uh, plasma cutting these, we'll compare and just see how close we were. I'll also extrude that out to quarter inch. We're not gonna worry, um, we'll, we'll model the hole, but we're not gonna cut it on the plasma. So, put our hole in, 125 radius, and centered at 2.25 inches up from the bottom. Okay, do a sanity check, holding up the part here, and you know, that looks about right. Okay, the way I export them into TorchMate CAD is just right click and do export to DXF, and we'll name it, that's fine. And you then have the face selected, click the check mark, gives you us a preview, and click save. We will then, in TorchMate CAD, import that part, and I always double check the overall dimensions to make sure uh, nothing got missed in translation. And we will un we'll break it to delete the circle because I don't want to plasma cut it. And we will then duplicate that because I, I want to cut four of them. Oops. Yeah, like so. Control D duplicates. I think the part I've got is a the sh scrap metal is a little bit narrower, so I'm going to index them down so I use up less overall length. I make a note of this before I go over to the plasma, so about five inches by you know less than eight inches. Uh, let's make our cut path and point two. Okay, now let's see. Here. I usually end up changing the start point. Now I want to measure off the bottom, so I'm not going to have my start point there because it's usually more uh, distorted from the pierce. So we'll start them all at the top, plenty of distance between them. I usually hit Alt-S to make sure it toggles you to the, between the solid mode. Everything looks good. Well, let's head over to the plasma. Okay, we've got a nice spot on a piece of quarter inch plate left over. These are actually all uh, rimfire steel brackets I was just cutting. So uh, for you plasma nerds out there, I am running this right at the hypertherm recommended setting, 48 inches a minute, 137 volts, and these are 45 amp uh, consumables and settings on the hypertherm itself. Let's rock and roll. Okay, here they are fresh off the plasma. I love my plasma. Any plasma will leave some uh, dross on the back side of the part. The great thing is when your settings are, are right on the machine, and I've had a lot of luck with that hypertherm, a lot of it will come right off if you just tap the part. You can see there were some big divots. Oops, there were some divots here that are all gone, and you can kind of see if you Try to pick one up here. There you go. Stuff actually just falls off. A lot of guys will use uh, heavy duty putty knives or scrapers as well. I usually throw these in a tumbler because as a one man shop, I would rather let them tumble for, for a half hour or hour while I'm doing something else than spend even five or 10 minutes to uh, treat each part. Tumbling is great because you can do a lot of parts at once. But uh, for the sake of this video and I want to get these parts just turned around, we're going to uh, use a, an angle grinder that I like for this and I actually like combining it with a mag base in a vise because you can usually leave it just on and you want to leave the uh, messy side up first so that you get good magnet purchase there. And we will grab one of these wire wheels that I use, cup wire wheels at least, and these will grind uh, real nice or clean up real nice.
I really love how those clean up. No sharp edges at all anymore. Nice look. Uh, really does a nice job. Okay, let's lay out those holes that we're going to tap. I've got a few of my favorite tools in the shop here. Regular old little uh, granite surface plate, my uh, height gauge, and then this is a ground block that uh, I use for either fixturing or setup or measurement like this. My brother Jan over in Cody, Wyoming sent it to me. So we said the first hole is at 2.25 and we are going to mark one hole there so we've got that as the control part if you will. So again I'm just going to hold the part against the two square faces so it's pretty accurate. We're already at 2.25 on our height gauge and we'll just scribe a line there, trying not to let the part wobble, although this still will be plenty precise. The next one we're gonna come up, uh, we said about a sixteenth of an inch, so that's 2.312. There we go. Same thing. So I'm letting it slip only because the camera's kind of in my way. Not that that's a good excuse, but. Okay, and then we're gonna come down an eighth of an inch from here. So 2.187, like so. Yeah, we're still clearing our block for now. We probably won't on the next one. And down another 16th, 2.125. Okay, we are hitting our block, but that shouldn't affect this. Nope, we can get in there. Okay, now we'll run our height cage down to 375. And we'll mark, we'll mark those. We've got a crosshair now, so it should look nice. And now another favorite tool, I swear it really is a favorite, my uh, optical center punch. You haven't used one of these before you use this glass bulb it's got a reticle in it and it magnifies it so you can see your crosshairs that you've only lightly inscribed quite well and i'll show you this in a second and then you simply swap that out without moving the black piece with the punch and tap down with a hammer and you've got a pretty darn accurate hole location so let's do this Okay, we've got a number seven drill in. Another tool I love, the Wilton cam lock vise. Just slide our part over. Just take it a little further here and lock her down. Let's see here, get her centered. A little cutting fluid. It's a high-quality drill, American-made, and it makes a difference. Something I want to explore more, this latest uh, plate I ordered, uh, I ordered quite a bit, and it's all pickled and oiled, which has no scale as I understand it, and I'm curious if that helps with things like drilling, because you're not having to punch through a hard outer shell. Um, no, Again, no conclusions on that yet, just something I occurred to me. We're going to tap them right here in place. Um, you know, when I'm feeling brave, I'll power tap. Um, eh, let's try it. So what I'll do is I'll turn the drill on, come down, and right when I touch the part, I'll turn it off. Yeah, I didn't get very far in this steel. Um, and that can be that can be a foolish game, but I get it started, and then we'll finish it here by hand. A lot of folks will do that type of power tapping on a bridge port, um, and it's, pre it's pretty cool. Um, and for those of you who follow on Facebook, you know I've been I had my eyes on a few different bridge ports. I think I'll pick one up here sooner than later. Now, if I have to do many more tools in this, I will run my tapping head. Uh, and I was going to mention the tumbler for tumbling parts and the tapping head are two good examples of things. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, please do me a favor and subscribe to these videos, because that's the kind of stuff 
I've got coming up. And if you don't like that stuff or you don't like Arduinos, then I don't know why you're watching right now. Um, okay, there's a... Get the camera focused here. There's a finished part. I'm going to go uh, drill and tap the others here. I'll fast forward for you guys so you're not uh, wasting your time. And then we'll wrap this up. The obvious benefit of doing this in a drill press being that it uh, parts already set up in there and then it uh, keeps your tap straight. All right, uh, that's about a wrap, folks. If you look, uh, our original part here on the left, if we lay it over one of the customer's sample pieces, and again, their piece was just ground with an angle grinder, we're pretty darn spot on. So that should be great. And the holes all tapped quite nicely. So that's it. Uh, one of the things I want to think about doing for the, the Wednesday widget is making sure you guys get something out of it. I appreciate your time watching these videos. And uh, hopefully you guys learned, somebody learned something here on a uh, tool or a trick or a way to use something. Um, the thing I think I'd like you guys to get out of it is a little understanding of how I run my shop and, and my philosophy, which um, this is a simple part, so I don't want to you know, make a big deal out of it. But don't overcomplicate things. Don't over design things. Don't over analyze them uh, when they're not needed. Uh, I think there's a quote that uh, you know, anybody can design something complex. It's a question of who can design something simply. And for me, customer one of these, they don't want to pay a big price for them. They want them turned around quickly. So how quickly can I take a part in, get it modeled up, get into the torch mate, get it tapped and get it back out the door and make a buck and move on. So that's kind of my approach to a part like this. Uh, as always, folks, I appreciate your time. I appreciate the likes, the thumbs up, the shares, the comments. I'll be back next Wednesday for the Wednesday widget. Uh, don't worry, the, they'll, I'll continue with regular videos as well. So see you soon. Thanks, folks.